Okay, I'm just going to show a couple um, tricks just to get your camera angle at what's kind of a more normal human height. Because when we are using this these models to make photorealistic renderings, we want them to look as close to uh, a real camera, like a real photo shoot that somebody would do on your house for like say a magazine or for promotional uh, reasons. So again, we want to pay attention to what's kind of uh, normal height for say a photographer and also kind of the angle for the human eye because here in the model there's a lot of different things you can do with it and again senior year you might want to have overviews like this depending on the architecture and the space but I'm um, using this example I downloaded because it's also a really good example of what I was explaining to class too is as these models get full, filled up with accessories um, it's going to be really hard and time consuming to navigate through a whole house Definitely still keep your whole house model because you might want to do walkthroughs and things like that, or you might want to do exterior shots of your house. So there's lots of good reasons to keep that whole house together on one file. But for your photo realistic renderings, you might want to do something like this, where I kind of describe this as a stage set where you take this kind of like pivot tool. You can see that, you know, they've put in their windows, they have a skylight, things like that. But, you know, there's kind of blank back here, but um, I'm assuming this, person to this project for client or as a student where again they're able to kind of maneuver into the space a lot more quickly without modeling say the whole house too all right so one of the things we saw um sophomore year and this happens with everybody because you're all learning the software is your angle is way up here um no human is taking a photo way up here i i get it or your instinct is to want to show what's up here in this loft and what's down here. Um, but you might need to do that with separate photos. So for example, just with using this tool, you kind of like zoom yourself in, position a little better. This gets tricky though. And again, a lot of the comments to folks were, um, you're gonna have to get um, kind of maneuver around. Like if there was a wall here, you're gonna have to hide that wall. A lot of you with, you have tight bathrooms, so you're gonna have to um, hide the wall. My guess is that's why this person maybe doesn't have a wall over here is that they were trying to maneuver in here and show some of the storage. Um, or I guess maybe that's glass too, it could be glass. Okay, but anyhow, so as we start to set up a more typical shot, this isn't looking so bad, but we're not quite sure about our camera height. So you might need to use your pan. Again, make sure you're kind of in here at like human height. Again, this isn't terrible, but one of the tricks that we want to use, it's kind of buried here in SketchUp, is what's called your um your field of view. So it's right here. The problem is, again, you click on this, nothing much happens because you have to type in various numbers. And again, it's not super clear that there's there's no prompt down below. Um, so if you click on it right now, so if I type in, say for example, we'll do something extreme, like 20 degrees. See now I'm moved way out. And that's as if I have like basically a 20 degree view of seeing into that space. That's not great. We don't want that for a picture. Now I can kind of play with it again. So I'm going to go up to camera, field of view. This time I'm going to type in 90 and it said pull it way in. Oh, hold on. Click there, click 90. And now I'm too close to the bed, basically. So one of the things Lynn and I were talking about behind the scenes is that working with the seniors, what they're finding is camera field of view of 50 degrees is what actually gets you a pretty kind of normal view of what your human eyes can see left to right in a scene. Um, and again, this isn't too bad height wise. I might um, kind of pivot this up just a little bit. It depends. Again, we understand you're trying to highlight different aspects of the room, but this starts to feel and look more like um, if you were physically standing in a space and took this photo, that would be kind of more realistic. Um, other things you want to remember to do, um, obviously hide your CAD plan if the drawings are still here too. You can also make sure to uncheck all of these guys here, the section fill, the axes, the guidelines. That's the things that are really helpful for when you're drawing your model, but sometimes you'll end up seeing like, you know, lines out here in space. Obviously, when you pull it into Enscape, you want to have a different um, view outside the back window here, but you can also play with this too. Um, one of the tricks we were talking about was... Um, uh, pretending, say, for example, if this was a solid uh, ceiling, you don't have your ceiling there. Uh, there's tricks around that too. So one of the things this is working on is called styles. So um, right now, this isn't a simple style. You can play with this. There's lots of styles already within Enscape. You can either make them more sketchy. I'll show you one really quick where it's sketchy lines. Uh, let's see, we'll pick this guy here. Um, and this is going to change kind of how the geometry in this plan is drawn. 
So yeah, that obviously is a much different style than a photorealistic presentation, but there might be some neat kind of uses for this in your portfolio, depending on how you want to present this. So let me kind of undo that. So we're going to do control Z to kind of go back to, oh, wait, it's now happily in that style. Hang on, let me pause it for a minute. Okay, I think I got it back to normal. So you are, again, welcome to play with all these different styles. This is the kind of the default architectural style that when you use the architectural template, it loads this, but obviously there's lots of them. You can also edit this too. So one of the things uh, you can kind of pay attention to is you can, here's the background that's creating that gray kind of ground color and then the blue sky. You can change that if you want. So the background, you can just kind of take out the sky. So see, it's no longer blue, it's just that default. You can also change the colors of the ground. So in this case, uh, they've got it on green, but you can turn that off. You can also make the background completely white. So as you kind of get more comfortable with this uh, kind of software and how what your presentation style is going to be, you can obviously play with this stuff. Um, to bring this into Enscape, it's nice to have this all just at white because, again, when we bring it into Enscape, then we can put some backgrounds in. Um, let me show you that quick while here since I have Enscape on here. So we're just going to go ahead and run that and see what this model looks like. This person's model, because it doesn't have all its four walls, um, it's gonna be overly bright because there's gonna be a ton of sunshine coming into it. Okay, so even without a back wall, this model looks really nice. Like there's not a lot of, there's no lighting in here yet, but again, this is not, um, I thought this would be a lot more washed out because there's so much sunlight basically behind us. Um, but again, to add scenery here, there's a there's a kind of fun kind of trick. Um, just find that for a second and pull that up too, we'll pause. Okay, so uh, like I said, my suggestion was bring it from um, SketchUp with basically a white background because then Enscape is able to read that all consistently as one basically uh, like empty part of your environment, I guess. So if you go over here to um, under set setting visual settings, so it's the little eyeball, it's about like third button in, um, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, spring semester you're going to play with and uh, play with this a lot again they also have a depth of field that you can play with here in your image um, you can bring in a, your own image into the background too it's that's a little tricky Anthony actually playing with it too um, but here you go so there's a couple places you can have instead of having a white background so you uncheck white background and it's got a default here I don't know if you can see it it's picking up the default kind of like ground sky of SketchUp but you can also put in, let's try forest. Let's see if that changes. So notice how the imagery kind of behind there changed. Um, this place is pretty urban. So let's see where we've got, okay, the urban one's weird. It's like a, it's like a construction site zone. So it does definitely need more, and it's got construction site. It needs more like buildings behind it. This town one isn't too bad. Um, but for a cityscape, to be honest, I would uh, force my own image in the background of that. And again, we're going to play with that because this is where you can do it here. So you can have an image um, and then you can like force it to be the background. Uh, the tricky thing with Enscape is how it uh, kind of wraps it around like the world of your drawing. But we are definitely going to play with this a lot more in our final project and in the projects with Anthony too. So, but this is where, again, in Enscape, you can kind of change that background, but it really nicely understands like there's the horizon line, here's the sky, you get some nice clouds up there. Um, and again, you have the same controls where you can kind of pivot around and change your viewpoint in here too. But um, definitely we want you getting Enscape uh, sorted out by the beginning of the spring semester, because again, you can see right away how much more realistic it is um, in this model as you would get say can lights in here and things like that, and a wall on the back, it will start to, um, the lighting will just kind of um, be upgraded that much more in here too. All right, so hope this helps just in terms of maneuvering around SketchUp um, and setting up your views. But like I said, we're all going to keep working on this spring semester and keep improving our understanding of it too.